It Happened on the Job, the podcast for relatable conversations with contractors. Sponsored by Goodman Insurance. Welcome to It Happened on the Job, episode 105 today. My name is Mike. That's Brian. Yo. Our guest uh, joining us via Zoom today from Fort Worth, Texas is Greg Fricks, uh, owner of Fricks Co. How you doing, Greg? Good, great. How are you guys today? Good. Thanks great. for uh, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for the invite. We we chatted a little bit off off air a little bit. Uh, I, I I have an affinity for Fort Worth. I, I love it out there. I lived there for six years, so it's good to good to good to have the people back here. Talking to him again. Um, so yeah, as we get started here, give us a little uh, of your story. How you got started in this industry and and the uh, road to where you are now with with your own company. Well, so the Frick's company is a uh, national industrial concrete floor construction company. Uh, my brother and I are 50-50 partners, been working together for 25 years. Our father started the business in 79. We both grew up in it, uh, <laughs> learning every aspect of it, being out in the field, working as, as concrete finishers and concrete men and operators and everything in between. And then we moved in, you know, after college, we both moved into the office Started learning the business side of things, learning how to run the jobs, and then uh, bought him out in 2004. Wow, that's uh, that's quite a, a lineage there, I guess. Were you guys always nationwide? Like when your dad owned it, was it was it as big as it is now? Uh, no, back in the in, he was a, a a local place and finish contractor, and actually our grandfather's a contractor as well, and they worked together and. Whereas, you know, each, each of them wanted to go in a different direction. So our father went off in the, the concrete place and finish direction and then grew his business extremely fast. In 1987, you know, Texas went into a major recession. So he was just looking for opportunities and started going nationwide, really trying to find other markets. And then that lent, lent itself to becoming a specialty contractor. So by the time I got out of school in 1990, he was pretty much everything was nationwide. And if you remember 1990 was still, we were in another recession. Mm -hmm. And what came of that was that then in the late nineties, you know, we started doing a little bit more work back in Texas and really through the recession of 2008, 2009, I probably didn't, I personally did more work in Texas than I had my entire career. Just wow. because Texas was growing so well, we had governors bringing so many, so many new businesses to the state. So that's crazy. Texas, what uh, fast growth? Yeah, and working with your brother was that always a plan for you guys to do it together, or was there uh, whoever kind of wants it more will take it, and you guys both just kind of win? Or how did that? How did that? Uh, how did that play out? Uh, actually, through high school and stuff, I was the only one who really showed an interest. And just had a real passion for concrete, loved doing it. Never really thought so much about working for business as much as being in the concrete industry. And then when Brad was in college, he decided that he wanted, he was very passionate about working for the, the family. And so he came back into the business and actually, I've always taken my hat off to Brad. Uh, my dad told him, so Brad's four years younger than me, but came into the business five years after I did. And, and my dad told him, so, okay, well, you got a college degree. That's great. But you're going to have to go back out to the field and figure it out first. As a laborer. Yeah. yeah. He'd be out there. We always laugh because he's running a laser screen with a college degree in his pocket. <laughs> learned what he needed to learn. And then uh, we started the succession program with dad in 99. And so, like I said, Brad and I have worked together for 25 years. Never had a fight. We've had many disagreements few arguments along the way, but we've never <laughs> left the building, you know, screw that guy. I'm never coming back. It's always been very uh, respectful. We, we both show a tremendous amount of respect for each other and that's, what's made us successful working together. That's awesome, man. And I assume you guys have different roles. So how does that break down for you guys? What's uh... we do now? That's an interesting question because we both ran the field forever. We're both the project managers traveling all over the country, you know, traveling hundred thousand plus miles a year. Wow. Running the jobs, running the business. And we started really uh, being very intentional about our growth a few years ago. And just recently, about a year ago, we sat down and wrote down all the duties and divided them up. Who was good at what, who wanted to do what. 
So we're still a year later, still kind of feeling that out, making sure we're not stepping. So you've ran 20 down. years, just kind of, Hey, figure it out. And it's just yeah. the two of us. And then just within the last couple of years, finally thought, Hey, let's actually put some, put some paper on this or put the, put this yeah, on the paper. Sounds, uh, sounds really crazy when you say it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's, it's more a testament to the relationship you guys have. Right. I mean, yeah, it, it means that you guys trust, understand, like yeah, understand and trust each other enough to, to make sure things get done without actually having, you know, a, a clear, this is my job. This is your job kind of thing. So yeah, no, if anything, it's more a testament to the relationship you guys have. Mm-hmm. I, I, I joke about it all the time when, uh, not all the time, but when people bring it up and working with their family, my, my mom and my wife are both in insurance. Uh, this, I don't know if you knew that, this is our day job is insurance. So my mom and my wife are both in insurance, but they work for different agencies. And I always tell people, there's no way I could work with either one of them. Like I would go crazy if I had to work with <laughs> my wife in the same building or my mom. I love them both dearly, obviously, but I think we uh, would butt heads more often than we would get along. So it's, uh, like I said, it's a testament to, to being able to, to work with your brother like that. What's yeah, the, uh, kind of funny, our estimator always just, we have, you know, the project manager room and the estimator would bid a job, get awarded. And he'd just put the file on the table and it would, sometimes it would sit there for a month <laughs> before one of you grabbed it. <laughs> I'll take that sometimes one. Sometimes it would get picked up that day. So. <laughs> What's the, uh, I mean, I have to imagine you guys have some pretty long-term employees and, and some that were kind of through that transition. How did that work? Um, through the transition, I, I would imagine, obviously, Brad and yourself both putting in your time in the field kind of garnered some respect in that that transition. But what was that like process like taking over? Oh, that that the fact that we knew how to do everything helped tremendously. It built yeah. a lot of respect for the men in the field, and you know, I think that sometimes the those blue collar workers, the tradesmen, sometimes are the hardest people in the world to gain respect from. Oh, hundred percent. But us yep. working out there and doing all of that helped tremendously. We still have – my brother just posted last week a video of a guy working on one of our jobs that started working for our dad 40 years ago. Jeez. Jeez. And we have – And he's still out in the field? Yep. He was a guy that, you know, he, he came from Mexico, worked his way up through the ranks, and was a foreman for us for 20-something years. And then about a year and a half, two years ago, decided that he didn't want that responsibility anymore, but continues to work for us as a finisher. Wow. So we've got a lot of old time, you know, a lot of those older guys are too old to really do the work. Concrete's hard. Yeah. Yeah, so I was going to say, what's his diet yeah, like yeah. to be able to keep his body in shape to do concrete <laughs> for years? Uh, he's in fantastic shape. Yeah. We're in that kind of shape. Right. <laughs> but uh, we have a lot of long-term employees. You know, when we first – uh, t- um, started running things. We had several people that left because they could see the writing on the wall that their career was so much that they had reached the height of their career with the sons being in here, and whatnot. Right. But uh, not too many, and not and certainly not some of the really good ones. There were several men that that worked for for us that actually trained us and taught us our craft. And so that was really pretty neat to become their boss. Right. Yeah. And then watch some of those guys retire. Hmm. Very cool, man. What, um, uh, being nationwide, I guess from an employee standpoint, I was just going to ask. Yeah. Are you guys, yeah. do you guys have guys that travel? I mean, it sounds like you guys are self performing a lot of this work. And, and what kind of work are you guys doing? It, it, it sounds pretty specialized as well. Our workforce that does our jobs is 100%. Frick's employees that leave from right here in Fort Worth, Texas. Mm. Wow. And that has been tough, especially through the economy being so great the last four years. We've had a very, very difficult time retaining employees. Retaining, yeah. Because they would always travel for us knowing that they could make a lot more money than they could right here in town. And now that's kind of flipped. They don't have to travel to make that kind of money. And that's forced all of us in this industry to to raise our rates. And then you start questioning, okay, are we raising beyond what's sustainable? Right. But you got to keep moving on the jobs. And so we, we do travel all over the nation. Like right now, we've got a job in Connecticut. And I've got a job, like I was telling Brian earlier, we've got a job coming up here in the next couple of months right there in y'all's neck of the woods there in Paris, California. So we're, we're nation, you know, border to border, ocean to ocean. And it, it gets difficult, but traveling, it's either you're a traveling worker or you're not. 
Yeah. And we've had guys that, yes, I can do it. I know I can do it. My wife's on board. With it. <laughs> Three weeks into it. They and, didn't know that. And when uh, you we've come had home. guys go for a week <laughs> yeah. and I can't do it. And, yeah. and then you have other people. Then we've had people. <clears throat> that, hey, I don't want to travel anymore. I'm going to stay home. And they're home three weeks and they come back and go, hey, I think I need to leave town. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of work are you guys doing? I mean, it, it sounds pretty specialized and like you guys are, I mean, the ones doing it, right? I mean, because, yes. I, I mean, it sounds like, yeah. All, all we do is is industrial concrete floors and some paving here and there for select customers. But we built the business in the food industry and the cold storage industry. Okay, cool. We do a lot of work for people like Americold and Cisco Foods and Benny Keith Foods. Uh, there's, and especially now, there's a major growth with the cold storage in America. And, what people, and we do a lot of work for different grocery companies as well. But in the food industry, whether it's broadline food distribution, cold storage, or grocery store distribution these facilities are running seven days a week yep 365 days a year up to three shifts a day and the forklifts that they're running have the smallest wheel and the heaviest loads they're putting the most wear and tear on these floors of any industry in in the country or, or the world for that matter so they they need a floor that's durable will stand up to their operation help support their operation and not be down with repairs mm -hmm. once a week or, or whatever. And then also keeping those forklifts up running to their, their full capacity. So we service that in not only the type of floors that we do, but in our technique, that's why all of our employees come from here because we train them to finish the floor that we needed, needed to be finished to give the owner the greatest durability, the greatest surface abrasion resistance, all the things that they need to run nonstop. And the way that we do that is that now we've, in the past several years, we've become literally a turnkey floor contractor, meaning that we're design build. We're, we have engineers that we're designing the floor, we're installing the floor, and then we're backing it and warrantying that floor. We, we wow. are the only concrete contractor in the nation that is offering that, that one complete package. So it gives the owner a lot of comfort knowing yeah. that it's going to be done right and mm -hmm. it's going to be done on time and it's going to service their needs for the life of that facility. You know what? I, I forgot. We talked a little, I think because uh, cold storage, it, it clicked in my head. Didn't we, we talked about that. You knew had known Vince free, right? Yes. I, yeah. yeah. I know Vince. Yeah, I don't yeah. know him real well. We've met a right. few times, but I know his I remember we talked about that when we first started talking about booking this and, and, uh, yeah, we actually just had lunch with him last week because he's right around the corner here. Good guy. Very cool. That's a small world, man. I love the love the 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 network or the the kind of family that this the show is building because you you're talking about concrete and, and reinforcing it or the the strength of the concrete. We had a guy on, and I I don't know if you may know him or, or heard of him in this industry, Jim but Andrews. Jim Andrews. Yeah. Um, he's from this area, and I know he does a lot of the West Coast, but he has. Uh, uh, I mean, a product it's more like as waste well. management. Yeah, but yeah. he a lot of same thing, but like strength concrete, yeah. concrete strengthening stuff that he uh, is putting into uh, like garbage facilities with those mm -hmm. kind of trucks. But somebody you might want to talk to. I mean, I feel like the two yeah. of you could could definitely uh, come together and change the industry for sure. I don't know, do all kinds of concrete stuff. It's fun. I don't know. Like I said, it's just fun kind of seeing this network that we build. You, you mentioned your brother posted a video the other day. What what kind of stuff are you guys doing? Digitally, that's something we like to talk about. It's it's kind of fun and new to contractors. I mean, and you've probably seen the change, right? I mean, I'm sure when your dad was in it, it wasn't, hey, we need to be out <laughs> well, in front of no people. Yeah, well, I mean, not, yeah. Or even when it did exist, like, or started to exist, I'm sure it was still it wasn't something that you or your brother or your dad thought, hey, we need to be on social media. But it sounds like you guys are kind of in that world now. Uh, a little bit. Really, Brad's on social media. He'll, yeah. he'll post that stuff. And it's good because it's a great way to... to I think it's a great way to get it out there and, and especially whenever you want to honor an employee like that. Right. You know, recently, I just recently started getting on LinkedIn a little bit more looking for opportunities and it's just kind of gotten, what I see is it's gotten very cluttered with yep. so many advertisements and everything and it's yep. and trying to sift through that. We actually several years ago tried to create a very strong marketing plan through social media and it didn't yield us what we spent. 
we spent a tremendous amount of money on it and I don't think we got much in return for it. And that's when we decided for the first time in the history of the company to hire a business, business development manager. And that's been much, a much greater benefit. Yeah. I think it's hard. Um, in the space you guys are in, right? I mean, yeah, yeah the, the residential side, I mean, homeowners are looking at LinkedIn or not LinkedIn, uh, Instagram yeah, and Facebook and all those kind of things. And, of yeah. 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 And they're using it. Yeah. Like he said, as a, as a resume or a way to kind of validate, but in your space being so specialized and being so industrial, it, it might not, uh, it might get there. Of, yeah. It might get there someday. Right. But yeah. Yeah. And what we found is, you know, it's such a small community that we're in. Right. You know, I go to a job and, as soon as our crew walks on site, we know five other trades there, no matter where we're at in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times it's, we just came off the same job together. <laughs> and you all just need to start chartering planes and going around. Yeah. The <laughs> and, which makes it nice and a lot easier to get the jobs done. Oh, for sure. We, yeah. Everybody works together, but that's what we found is it was just actually, it was such a, a small niche and such a broad market. We weren't getting the returns for it. Yeah. So what kind of things were the, were the, was the business development coach that you guys hired? What kind of things um, were they kind of helping you with or, or pushing you towards? Well, no, no, no. We hired a, a business development manager. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does so much more than, than just sells. He, he develops a lot of relationships. And okay. Helps build the business. So, And a, a former military guy. So it's nice to be a part of that the day after veterans day yeah. yeah are you former military as well no i'm not oh, okay oh that's right you probably wouldn't have had time right i mean you came into it right out of high school yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i probably would have done a lot job. better doing that than going to college too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome so from a from a training standpoint i mean you talked about you know being so specialized in the guys training there so where have you found uh to be most successful finding employees and, and what's that hiring process like for you guys through training? You know, the, the, the best guys that we ever find are the ones that come with a friend or the foreman or superintendent brings them in. And it's a lot of times it's some, it's they're from their community or from their family. Right. And so there's that, that tie there that a guy's going to come in and try a little harder because he doesn't want to let down his uncle or his father mm -hmm. or his brother or whatever. Right. And then we recently hired an in-house recruiter <clears throat> that's helped tremendously bring in different individuals, uh, being in from office help to uh, accounting help and actually help in the field and other places, everything in between. That's been a lot more versatile as opposed to trying to go with a recruiting agency. Right. It's been a lot less expensive. Well, and somebody hands on to that knows your culture and yeah. how you guys operate, right? You're not trying to have to culture. explain that to them every day and, and, and coach them through that. Yeah. And it weeds out how much, how much, how many interviews we have to do as the owners of the company. Yeah. And it, that way, if, if, if they're talking to one person for one position, then they go, you know what? You actually sound better for this position. Yeah. Let's shift yeah. gears and start talking about that. That's been very beneficial. Very cool. So from a, from a training standpoint, are you, uh, I mean, are you okay bringing somebody on that has no experience at all? I mean, do you have the capacity to be able to, to train them and bring them up to speed or are you guys looking for some level of experience? Oh, absolutely. Um, either way, actually, I kind of, Brad and I both prefer the, I've never done it before. I don't train them your way. And, and you know, the other thing is I like for a guy who has at least been in concrete before and knows how hard it is because Concrete's hard, all puns intended. It's, it's <laughs> difficult. That went way over my head until you said that, but that made, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> but it is, uh, it's, it's hard work. It's, it's, you know, I'd argue that it's the hardest job out there on the construction site. And we get people all the time say, I can do it, I can do it. And you put them out there for a day and they're shocked at the, the hours, the constant work, the no break, because concrete doesn't wait. <laughs> it's, it's gonna it's gonna keep setting and keep getting hard but i I've, i like the idea of hiring somebody who doesn't know and you get to train them because most people you hire somebody said it I'm, I'm stealing what somebody else said when you hire somebody who has experience you typically have to untrain them right and then start the training process yeah. and as long as you're not trying to untrain an attitude that's possible but it slows down the process of getting them up to speed to do it your way 
Right. And like right now, we've got a superintendent out in the field who comes from the concrete industry, but he's never done this type of work. So he's a he's an open book and he's a sponge and, and eating it up and and learning very quickly. So that's a lot of fun. And we've had other superintendents that all we heard was, well, the way we did it, the way we did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that uh, that doesn't last long, typically. Nope. <clears throat> nope. It's terrible for the culture, too. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. What, um, what are the things you guys are doing or decisions you've made to deliberate, I guess, deliberate decisions you've made in the, in the employee retention process? Uh, just cause I would imagine, you know, it's probably pretty tough for you guys to lose somebody that you've trained and bring, bring them up to speed. So, and, and with that, that bar moving all the time with the pay, are there other things you guys are doing to, uh, to help retain employees or kind of keep that, keep them around? You know, what was what we found out in all of this is that it was taking men too long to climb the ladder with the net crew. The, the, the crew members weren't teaching each other. And it's that fear that if I teach you, you're going to outperform me and and I won't have a job. So it's convincing the older guys that, Hey, as long as you do your job, you don't have to worry about losing it. Right. When you're not doing your job, you got that you got to worry about it and getting them on board to help train the young guys. And then and everybody falls into that. I don't want to start training because we're just going to leave. Well, you have to train constantly. And so we evaluated that we were not good at that. And Brad actually spent a, a tremendous amount of time developing a training guide for us that actually gives these guys a path. And you can mm-hmm. sit down with them in Spanish or English, sit down with the book and go, okay, what do you want to do? And when a guy says, well, I want to be a finisher, that's, or I want to be a form setter, and we, then we go to that section and go, okay, you know, accomplish these things, and we'll check you off, and then we'll move you up from there. But it actually gives them something that, hey, okay, these 10 things I got to learn to get past finish level, level one finisher to get to level two. And it doesn't say it in there, but it's pretty clear that if you go from level one to level two, you're going to get a pay increase. That's true, yeah. Yeah. So we presented that, look, you want to climb the ladder, which means you want to learn all this stuff so you can get paid more money. This is your path. Yeah. And that's helped tremendously. And our turnover really is at the lower level, the, the labor guys. And that's always been Oh, hard. for sure. Yeah. And yeah, you're well, not alone there either. Yeah. I mean, you're removing the ambiguity, right, of coming into a job and you're, you're creating transparency within the culture. And then they actually have an understanding of how they can succeed. You're essentially, you're incentivizing your guys to continue to move forward, to train, to learn. And by the way, here's a clear way to get there. I, I feel like most of the people we talk to don't have that. Yeah. You know that's, what I mean? Uh, yeah. That's I, like I, I like to think that we're very innovative and take my hat off to Brad that he came up with the idea. And yeah. spent, like I said, spent a tremendous amount of time developing the book. And then everybody, for every section, they get a, a coin. Oh, that's that's awesome. That they have achieved. And then on the back of it, like this one has our our core values, but the other ones have a picture or whatever, what they accomplished. And and it shows it's, you know, for level one, level two, level three finisher, and then the same for form setters and and operators for the screeds and different stuff. So that's a very military thing. It's a challenge going in their pocket or or take home. That's awesome. I I love love that thing. Cause that's like, that's a very, like, that's a very military type thing. My brother's a sheriff and I know that they do those kind of things too. Like they call them challenge coins, Yeah, different things that they accomplish. I mean, that's, Mm -hmm. that's a pretty cool little way to kind of keep them incentivized. Well, keep them engaged. Yeah. Incentivized and engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of pride, you know, keep them proud of where they work and, and being able to kind of show those kind of things off. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What um what are some of the challenges you guys face? How's been how's it been with COVID and, and maybe some out <clears throat> stuff outside COVID, especially travel, right? I mean, I'd have to imagine that oh, geez, that got yeah. pretty difficult for you guys. Yep. Yeah, right at the start it was very hard because our men were very afraid to travel. They were they were worried about going out into the, the these different parts of the country and then bringing it home to their right. family. Right. Because yep. you know, March, April, May, there was so much Unknown. There still is, I know, but back then it was and testing scary. was hard back then too. Yeah, it wasn't as yeah. easy as it is now. Very scary thing, but getting them out there, and you know, all the jobs got slowed down. So we, you know, our volume we closed our book September 30th. So our revenue for the year was down because of it. 
But what it's done so far has created so many new opportunities that we're very excited about the future, especially this year. We're, 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 we've got a lot of work this year and even more for 22. Is, wow. that, uh, is, that, is that just because there is a backlog of, of work because of the slowdown? Or are you guys venturing into other verticals? What, what's the reason for uh, yes. the potential? Yeah, all of it. And, and a lot of it goes back to the strategy that we started developing before COVID ever came along. We're seeing a lot more automation. I think, I think Vince even talked about it in his podcast about the, what's, what they're calling high-rise freezer facilities. Yeah, yeah. going up rather than out. Yeah. A lot more automation. And <laughs> so we had already developed a program for moving into that environment and designing those type floors. And so through this, yes, we're chasing, chasing those. And we had already started building a great rapport and a, and a great relationship with Lowe's and Home Depot. Well, we all know what that ha- what what. Lowe's and Home Depot did through all this. Everybody just started adding on and redecorating and remodeling. <laughs> yep. yep. So that's been that's been a, a, a great account for us, and we're seeing a lot of movement there. So it's not only in the in the automation, but yes, there is a, a buildup of backlog for everybody. Everybody, everything that was put on hold, we have not seen anything come off the shelf, go away. Right. Things either been shelved for a short period of time or just held. Like we've got a, a, a contract for one job in California for a food distributor that they just put the whole project on hold for nine months and said, tell us what the increase is going to be for materials that, you know, don't go away. This is going to take off. We're going to build it. Yeah. And that just got confirmation last week that that was the truth. They just wanted to wait until they got comfortable with what was going on with COVID right. and the right. vaccine and everything else. That's good. Wow. That's awesome. That's good to hear from, uh, from a workflow standpoint that, that people aren't getting too scared and, and shutting down too much. Yeah. yeah we're not busy. seeing any of that. Yeah. What, um, so what are, what are some of the, your cool jobs that you, that you kind of have the, that are on the top of that list? Like, Hey, I'm proud we did this hey, or on, some yeah. of the fun stuff or anything, anything, uh, like, you know, not necessarily any single jobs. Well, you know, yeah, there's a few along the way, uh, but it's really building a relationship with the, with the clients, like Aldi foods, I don't know if y'all are familiar with them. We've yeah, done, they're pretty new out here, but yeah. yeah. So, you know, we've done, uh, I think over the past few years, we've done 20 jobs for them. Wow. And, you know, to continue going back year after year after year. And then now with Americal doing these high rise facilities, that's, uh, like I said, a whole new market for us. We've done a few of those type of slabs, but. Well, a lot of them over the years but to really actively pursue those. Yeah, uh, we've done some work in Canada and actually actually been a job today in Canada. So I love doing the international stuff. It's always a big challenge. Now uh, we've done a lot in the in two thousand nine. We went down to Chile. We had a contact down there. We heard that they were looking for our type of floor. And so we went down there to find somebody that we could work with, ended up partnering with a guy down there that turns out to be, you know, just we, we formed a great relationship, uh, partnership and friendship. Uh, that's been a lot of fun figuring out how they do things and, and <laughs> the whole new way of uh, <laughs> so far culture, away. Yeah. Uh, that's been that's been a challenge and it's been rewarding and exciting. So, yeah, it's been. It's been so when you when you do that kind of international stuff, it. it what is it like from a material standpoint? Are you having to source new materials that are similar to, to what you can get here or are you, you moving stuff back and forth or? Well, actually in Chile, we shipped everything from here. Wow. And it actually created some markets for, for U S manufacturers that had no idea how to enter the market. There's That's three cool. manufacturers that we took down there, convinced them to sell us their product you know, it, you put it in a container to take a month to get down there, sometimes yeah. two months, depending yeah. on what it was, and actually opened up some markets for them down there. That was that was pretty neat to be a part of. And then, you know, right now, our biggest struggle is Canada. You know, we're trying to go to Canada. We have a client <clears throat> that's wanting us to do this work in Canada, and so we're trying to figure it out. We think we got everything worked out, and then, you know, everybody's worried about a second wave. And right. Oh, they yeah, because they're, they're pretty, their border's pretty tight, right? It's With uh, lockdown right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
That's difficult, man. Jeez. There's yeah. no uh, work visas or anything like that, or work exclusions in in, th- in, the, in any of the stuff that yeah, they. Not right now. Well, <laughs> it's a hard no. Yeah, it's a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody thought Trump was tough on borders. Here we are. <laughs> Canada's not letting anybody in or out. No, that's crazy. Very cool. So where do you? Where have you? I mean, it sounds like obviously being such a small uh, niche and in, in, in this this group that you're in. Where have you found the best relationships? Where, where, where do you think that you guys are, are, are coming up with these relationships uh, most successfully? Well, it, it's between the owners and the design build contractors. Yeah. And then it's, it's a constant chicken or the egg. Which one do we chase first? And I think where we've had the best success is going after the owner and going to the owner, finding out what his needs are and convincing him to tell the, the design build that I want this floor. You have to use fricks. We want fricks. Let's see what we got to do to get, you know, how can we get fricks on the job? And then building on those relationships with those design build this, firms. Yeah, getting in with them. Yeah. Once, once you start that cycle, then you have the design build firms. When they, not only do we produce great floors, it's how we do it. It's how we roll on site, how efficient we are, how fast we get the work done. And that we don't have issues that linger and the contractor's constantly trying to get us back to fix stuff. And forming those relationships and letting them see that we are a very self-sufficient contractor. Then whenever they go to their next owner, and that's how actually how we got in with Lowe's. We were doing a job on the East Coast for a, a grocery company out there. And that contractor didn't know us, but he went along with it because the owner wanted us there. And then when, when Lowe's started looking for a better solution, that contractor brought them out to not only see our floors, but to see how we perform. Hmm. And that's how we got involved with Lowe's. And then that's been a, a, a great relationship. And so it's, that's been our best path. Get the owner sold and then convince the general contractor. Well, and it sounds like, yeah, I mean, it, it, obviously you have a clear path there, but it almost sounds like it doesn't really matter who, you, uh, and I don't want to dumb this down at all, but like, it's, it's almost like the work that you're doing and the way you perform it is, is speaking volumes over anything oh, yeah. else. Right. I mean, you're, you're able to kind of show oh, yeah. what you can do. And as long as you can get somebody out there to see it and, and experience it, you've almost got them in, in, you know, in your corner for the next job that comes yeah. up. Very much. And that's why, you know, we, we sold our product by word of mouth by doing just that. And then yeah. when Brad and I started becoming intentional about wanting to grow and not just grow the revenue, grow the profits right? and, and be more profitable because we all have those clients that we really don't want to work for, but you have to, <laughs> but you have to, have to keep the top choices. line. Yeah. And so that's where when we brought in our, our business development manager, Brett, that was what we challenged him with find us bigger and better opportunities that yeah. you want to work yeah. for. Yeah. yeah. As opposed and to being be, forced to be yeah. proactive. Let's yeah. not just sit back and wait for it to come. Let's be proactive. about yep. it. Very cool, man. Well, what's the, uh, what's the future look like for you guys? I mean, from a, from a growth standpoint, I'd say ge- geographically, but I mean, you guys are obviously, obviously all over the map. Are there different verticals you guys are or different industries you guys are looking to try to get into or, you know, I think there's a, a lot of opportunity for us in, in more retail distribution as things go more and more automated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that the the cold storage industry is way behind, not only here, but all over the world. And so it's, it's going to keep, that portion of it's going to keep growing. I just think that there's a lot of, well, I don't think, I know there's a lot of people out there that are building cold storage and dry storage grocery distribution that we don't have relationships with. I think that'll continue to grow. The, what we do is what's called a shrinkage compensating floor. And we eliminate 90% of the joints in a conventional slab. So we're able to go out there and pour 15,000 square feet with no joints in between. Wow. And that is something that we've been doing for 35 years. And we have a lot of success. And there's, we're not the, the only ones doing it, but that is the best, most tried and true method of doing a a jointless floor. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people out there. Now the, the owners are starting to realize that that's what they want and need. And so there's a lot of people trying to develop a system 
that they say competes with ours. But what all of these are, they're systems. It's not a one, you know, it's, it's somebody who has the idea, an engineer who's designing it, and then somebody else installing it. So that's where us promoting very aggressively that we're the only ones that do that provide all three in one package is creating a lot a lot of opportunity for us in yeah. new markets throughout between retail and 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 cold storage and dry storage grocery. So that's we awesome. Have, you know, we're we're fairly young guys. We have Brad and I both have uh, four kids between the two, four sons between the two of us. Uh, right now, only one of them is highly interested. He's working for us. Uh, my oh, yeah? son, Ethan. He's actually running the job up in Connecticut right now. And then I have another son who wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> but he typically, uh, well, Maybe what we've seen brat, is, yeah, right? in about 10 or 15 years, that'll turn around, right? Yeah. I mean. Yeah. You know, and it's been fun. That's one of the things. Uh, as, as entrepreneurs, you know, you have an opportunity, you have an opportunity to teach your kid a work ethic. You have a place because yeah. it's hard. A, a guy is 14, 15 years old. Where is he going to work other than mowing yards? Right. 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 So we took advantage of that. We brought him in and let him work. And, you know, so I've got a 21 and a 24 year old and they both grew up working in the business. And, you know, my youngest one says concrete's boring. I said, yeah, that's because you don't like it. So <laughs> go do something else. And that's what he's doing. So it'll be interesting to see where we're at in the next 20 years, but I, I feel very positive about it. Uh, we have, we have great employees that, that are loyal and dedicated, not just to be here, but to work hard. And they, they take a lot of pride in the company. This challenge coin I showed you, you know, there's a lot of people around who around here who are carrying those in their pocket and, and people who have them on their desk to display them and because they're, they're proud of them. So we see a lot of pride in the company and, and I think it's, I know it's going to be around for a long time. That's awesome. Are Brad's kids in, uh, interested at all or? Uh, a little show, they've shown some interest interest lately. One of them's a little too young. Yeah. Uh, and the other one graduated from UT with petroleum engineer degree. So, he graduated yeah. back in May and you know, what's going on in the oil industry, you know, yeah. there wasn't anybody hired. Right. Toy right. Engineer. So he came yeah. here and did a lot of work for us. That was very beneficial. So that's, I was going to say, it seemed like a good idea to get when he went in. Right. But then, uh, especially out in Texas, that's, that was a big deal out there. It'll come back around. Yeah. yeah. It'll get I there. I thought it was a great choice for him. And that's cool. He likes it. So that's and what's U- important. UT's really- not, UT's no, uh, no, uh, I don't want to say what I would say. It's, it's fun. It's, it's a good, good spot to go to. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. it was hard to get in there. So, yeah, but it's, it's fun. And, and then my son being here, it's, it's really fun, especially being in that environment 30 years ago and knowing what I went through and now see it. Now he's going through it. And yeah. Brad and I yeah. are both. And then Brad and I have completely different personalities. So we really hold each other accountable. So like I tell my son, I go, look, I'm, I'm not making the same mistakes my dad made, but I'm making mistakes. <laughs> you know? And it's just fun to watch him come up through it and do what we had to do, earn the respect of the guys and the crew. And he has it and working hard at it. And it's, it's, it's very interesting to see him out there performing and knowing that. Yeah. That's we, gotta be fun. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Very awesome. Well, thanks so much for the time, Greg. We appreciate it. It's been great. I yeah, uh, hope sure. you had fun as well. Um, before we go, we want to let you uh, tell the people where to find you. Let them know where to find your websites, phone numbers, email, whatever it is, how to get a hold of you guys. Uh, the best place is the fricksco.com, F-R-I-C-K-S-C-O.com. And then my email is gkf at the fricksco.com. Awesome. Very cool. Well, thanks so much. Say hi to your brother for us. Uh, sounds like you guys are doing a great job and we appreciate it. Stay in touch and uh, stay safe out there. We appreciate it. Thanks, Thank you Greg. very much. I thanks, Greg. It. Have a good one. All right. Good day. Hey, thanks for listening. And if you've made it this far, go ahead and give us a like or five stars or whatever means you like us. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss our next episode and check out our website for more video content and extras. While you're there, shoot us a message if you want to be a guest. We'd love to have you on. Thanks again and we'll see you next time.